So einen guten Abend allerseits. Let us open with prayer. Lasst uns mit Gebet öffnen. Ja, Lieber himmlischer Vater, wir danken dir für diesen Tag. Danke für all die Sachen, die du uns gegeben hast. Und für die Segnungen, die wir von dir empfangen konnten. Und wir beten jetzt, dass du uns hilfst, offene Augen, Ohren und Herzen zu haben. Du, so dass du uns mit dem Frühregen füllen kannst, so dass wir zur Buße gebracht werden können. Und hilft uns, dass wir willig, willig gemacht zu sein. Ich bete jetzt, dass du Bruder Lorenz segnest, als er die Klasse leitet. Und bete, äh, segne auch die, äh, die Übersetzung. Und auch die über das Livestream und uns hier auch. Und wir beten, dass du den Teufel fernhältst. Und dass du uns hilfst, dass wir unsere eigenen Weisheit nicht an hier anwenden, sondern dass wir erlauben, dass dein Wort für sich spricht. Und wir danken dir dafür in Jesu Namen. Amen. This evening we will start looking at these different offerings. So, heute Abend werden wir anfangen, diese verschiedenen Opfergaben anzuschauen. And the next classes will be very, I don't know, brain, 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 brain. <laughs> Und die nächsten Klassen hier nach werden sehr ähm, mühsam auf unserem Verstand werden. But as usual. Uh, then the reward will be the bigger. Okay. Aber wie immer, dann dass die Belohnung wird umso größer sein. Okay. So let us just read this quote uh, that we also read yesterday as a reminder. So lasst uns diesen Zitat, die wir gestern gelesen haben, zur Erinnerung in der Livestream. Um, so is here uh, become familiar with Levitical law. We are to become familiar with the Levitical law in all its bearings, for it contains rules that must be obeyed. It contains the instruction that, if studied, will enable us to understand better the rule of faith and practice that we are to follow in our dealings with one another. So when we understand it better, we will also deal better one another. So when we this here better understand, then we will also better with one another. No soul has any excuse for being in darkness. Those who receive Christ by faith will receive also power to become the sons of God. Okay. So, so she connects also this understanding by receiving Christ by faith to become sons of God. Okay. So she verbindet dieses Verständnis mit um, das Empfängen von Christus durch Glauben mit uh, Söhne Gottes werden. No, uh, in a sense, the understanding of the book of Leviticus she connects with receiving Christ by faith to become sons of God. Okay, das Verständnis von das dritte Buch Mose verbindet sie mit Christus empfängen durch Glauben, so dass wir Söhne Gottes werden können. Is that other quote on this? Leviticus is the gospel, right? Also es gibt da eine Zitat irgendwo, der sagt, dass das dritte Buch Mose ist auch das Evangelium. Okay. okay, so, and I don't know when really to start because it's so much information and so big and deep, okay? Und ich weiß eigentlich gar nicht, wo ich anfangen soll, weil es so viele Informationen hier drin gibt und es ist so tief. So, I thought I'd just start at the beginning. Okay. So, natürlich habe ich gedacht, wir fangen einfach am Anfang an. And God uses always the natural to teach us the spiritual. Und Gott benutzt immer das Natürliche, um uns das Geistliche Lektion zu lehren. Therefore, we can never understand the spiritual unless we understand first the natural. Okay. So, die Regel ist, wir können das Geistliche nicht verstehen, ohne zuvor das 
äh, Natürliche zu verstehen. And you will see, the natural can be a little bit painstaking. Okay? Und so wie wir sehen werden, das Natürliche kann ein bisschen manchmal schmerzhaft sein. Yes, in the sense that it will take much con concentration and endurance. In dem Sinne, dass es viele Aufmerksamkeit braucht und Ausdauer. Okay, so let's read Leviticus chapter 1. So lasst uns erst äh, dritte Buch Mose Kapitel 1 lesen. And this is the first type of offering, burnt offerings. Und das ist die erste Art von Opfergaben, die Brandopfern. Okay, let us read um, the whole chapter and three verses each. So, wir lesen den ganzen Kapitel erst durch. And I will just stop. Okay. And the Lord called unto Moses and spake unto him out of the tabernacle of the congregation, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel and say unto them, If any man of you bring an offering unto the Lord, ye shall bring your offering of the cattle, even of the herd, and of the flock. If this offering be a burnt sacrifice of the herd, let him offer a male without blemish. He shall offer it with his own voluntary will at the door of the tabernacle the congregation before the Lord. Okay. And he shall put his hand upon the head of the burnt offering, and it shall be accepted for him to make atonement for him. And he shall kill the bullock before the Lord and the priest. Aaron's son shall bring the blood and sprinkle the blood round about the altar that is by the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. And he shall flay the burnt offering and cut it into his pieces. And this is a very that the priest shall put fire upon the altar and lay the wood in order upon the fire. And the priest and his sons shall lay the parts, the head and the fat, in order upon the wood that is on the fire which is upon the, the altar. But his inwards and his legs shall be washed in water, shall he wash in water. And the priest shall burn all on the altar to be a burnt sacrifice and offering made by fire was sweet savor unto the Lord. If his offering be of the flocks, namely of the sheep or of the goats for burnt sacrifice, he shall bring it a male without blemish. And he shall kill it on the side of the altar northward before the Lord. And the priest Aaron's son shall sprinkle his blood round about round about upon the altar and he shall cut into uh, shall cut it into his pieces with his head and his head and the priests shall lay them in order on the wood that is on the fire which is <coughs> on the altar he shall wash the inward and collect with water. The priest shall bring it all and burn it upon the altar. It is a burnt sacrifice, an offering made by fire of a sweet savor unto the Lord. And if the burnt sacrifice for this offering to the Lord be of all, then he shall bring this offering of children up or young children. And the priest shall bring unto the altar, and bring off his head, and burn it on the altar, and the blood thereof shall be run out at the side of the altar. And he shall pluck away his cup with the with his feathers, and cast it beside the altar on the east part at the base of the ashes. And he shall clean it with the leaves thereof that shall not divide it asunder, and the priest shall burn it upon the altar, upon the wood that is upon the fire. It is a burnt sacrifice and offering made by fire of, of a sweet savor unto the Lord. Okay. All right. So, <coughs> so, we can go through this chapter now, um, step by step. So we can in this chapter, Schritt for Schritt, jetzt behandeln. Okay, so 
When was this burnt offering to be offered? So, when soll dieses Brandopfer geopfert werden? According to verse 3, for instance. Yes, verse 3, zum Beispiel. It says, if his offering be a burnt sacrifice of the herd, let him offer a male without blemish. He shall offer it of its own voluntary will at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation before the Lord. So, when was it to be offered here? So, when sollte das geopfert werden? Is it the door? No, but where? When? Well, it says it's voluntary. Yes, when it's a voluntary offering, okay? This is a freiwillige offer. Okay, so... So it's a voluntary... voluntary Will. Okay. So <coughs> now the question: Where? Frage ist jetzt wo? At the door of the tabernacle. Right? An der Tür vom Stiftshütter. The door. And we understand. Right. The sanctuary was you had a court and then you had the, the, the tabernacle, right? Das Heiligtum wir verstehen, dass es gab den Vorhof und dann der Stiftshütte. So it's at the door of the tabernacle, meaning it's not at the door of the court, but at the door of the tabernacle. Right? Tür zur Stiftshütte ist es nicht der Tür zur Vorhof, sondern der Tür zur das Heilige. Um, and what is the sinner to do? And what soll der Sünder tun? According to verse 4? Yes, verse 4. Hands up in the head. Yes. Right. So lay hands on the head. Mm. So seine Händen auf den Haupt legen. That's basically what the sinner is to do in all this. Was soll der Sünder in all dies tun? And what uh, should be the effect of this? Und was soll der Effekt dessen sein? How do you mean what's the effect? I mean, what, what is the result? Was der Resultat? The purpose? No, the result of it. According to verse 4. Yes, verse 4. Yes, atonement is made for him. Right? Versöhnung für ihn zu machen. So, Um, results in Okay. And then it says here in verse 5, And he shall kill the bullock before the Lord, and the priests Aaron's son shall bring the blood and sprinkle the blood round about upon the altar that is by the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. Okay, so what is, who is to do what here? So, wer soll was here to? Yes, okay. Also, er musste immer noch den Stier töten. So, kills the bullock. Okay, and then the priest is to do what? The priest shall what to? Take the blood and bring it to the altar. Sprinkle. Yes, sprinkle it where? Around the altar. Yes, where? The altar. Which altar? In the porch. Hmm? Uh, in the porch. Yes, and which altar was in the court? The priest. Yes. So here, sprinkle on or around? What's the say? On the bottom. On the bottom. Okay. And on the bottom. On the bottom. Okay. And blood round. About 
fun. Um, also, don't sacrifice. Okay. Which was in the fault. In the fault. Alright, so let's continue. This is five. Uh, then in verse 6, and he shall flay the burnt offering and cut it into pieces. So who's that again? So where is this here? The sinner, right? This is the sinner. So, and he, the sinner, shall flay the burnt offering and cut it into pieces, and the sons of Aaron, the priest, shall put fire upon the altar and lay the wood in order upon the fire. Right, so it's the sinner that is to flay. This is the sinner that has. Flay means to take the skin. skin off, right? I think so. Okay. okay. So, and the priest, what is the priest to do? And the priest, what should the priest do? Yes. Okay. So, puts fire. And which altar it is? Also, we put fire on the altar. And which altar? The same altar. Yes, with this altar of burnt sacrifice. The same altar. Because that's to be burnt, right? Yeah, Lay so the wood in order. How do you know the sinner has to do this place? Because it says okay. in the next verse, what Aaron and his sons does. In the verse before, it says, and he, the sinner, shall kill the wood. So we, we can see it's always the he is always the sinner and the, the priest is always the priest. The priest, okay, because it says here verse four. Yeah. Verse four. And he, the sinner, shall put his hand upon the head of the burnt offering, and it shall be accepted for him to make an atonement for him. And he, the sinner, shall kill the bullock before the Lord, and the priests, Aaron's sons, shall bring the blood and sprinkle the blood round about upon the altar that is by the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. And he, the sinner, shall flay the burnt offering and cut it into pieces. And the sons of Aaron, the priests, shall put the fire upon the altar and lay the wood in order upon the fire. And the priest, Aaron's son, shall lay the parts, the head and the fat, in order upon the wood that is, upon, uh, that is on the fire which is upon the altar. But his inwards in his, and his legs shall he... So who is he again? So where is er here in verse 9? Wieder? The sinner. The sinner, right? The sinner. But his inwards and his legs shall he, the sinner, wash in water, and the priest shall burn all on the altar to be a burnt sacrifice, an offering made by fire of a sweet savor unto the Lord. Okay. So, <coughs> so therefore here also in verse 8, the priest uh, sh shall lay the parts the head and the fat in order from the wood. Okay. In verse 8, the priest lays uh, parts of the offering the tile in the cup and the fat. Order. That's the fat also. Plus fat. Okay. So and then in verse 9 it says, But his inwards and his, <coughs> his legs shall he wash in water. The sinner is to do this. Also and the soul in the rain, the wine and wasser washen. So ich will continue this thing. Um, um, wash inwards. Water and then the priest is to burn all this on the altar. 
Und der Priester soll all das auf den Altar bringen. Okay, so therefore in this offering, how much is burned? In diese Opfergabe, wie viel wird verbrannt? Everything. Alles. Okay. So com it's completely burned up. Es wird alles verbrannt. Okay. So basically we can see the sinner here is to to kill the sacrifice. He is to flay it. It's probably meaning I don't know. Does anybody know what flay means? Zerlegen. Zerlegen. Hmm? Okay. So okay means yeah to take the skin off, but also to put it in pieces. Das heißt zu enthaupten und auch in Teile zu zerlegen. Yeah, but maybe it doesn't mean to cut the skin off. I don't know. We have to look it up. But when you look that up, it means to cut in pieces. So he puts this parts then in order on the altar and also the fat and then he washes the inwards and the legs in waters and then the priest burns also all these things on the altar alles wird zerteilt auf dem altar gelegt und verbrannt und das fett und dann der sünder wäscht den innereien und den bein und die priester legen das auch auf dem altar okay the flame means to remove the skin yes means to take off the skin. It would also make sense about putting the legs separately on because to flay you have to cut off the arms and the legs to, and the knees. It says here flay and cut. Yes. Two, two different things. The Bible says sagt enthäut und zerleg. Also zwei verschiedene Sachen. Yes, 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 yes. Okay. Yes, okay, so it means to take off the skin and then also to cut in pieces. It means to enthäuten and then to okay. um, all right. So, w what does it represent? Was steht, the, was steht das da? The more important question, right? Frage. So, <coughs> for instance, in verse nine. Zum Beispiel in Vers neun. Um, Let's go to Psalms 51. Let's uns zum Psalm 51 gehen. And keep your finger in Leviticus. So halt den Platz hier. Fifty-one. Psalm 51. Because in verse 9 it said, right, that the inwards and his legs shall be shall the sinner wash in water. Dritte Buch Mose in Vers 9 es sagt, dass die Innereien und die Beine sollen im Wasser gewaschen werden. Now in Psalms 51 in Psalm 51 in verse 6 Vers 6 it says I mean that's this Psalm where David confessed his sin and repented because of Bathsheba or Bathsheba. Hier ist der Psalm, wo David seine Sünden bekannt hat und Buße getan haben wegen Bathsheba. In, in verse 6 it says, verse six. Behold, thou desirest truth in the inward parts. Wahrheit in die and in, in the hidden part thou shalt make me know, shall make me to know wisdom. So, what is the water representing? So, was dieses Wasser da? According to Ephesians chapter 5. Gemäß Epheser 5. Yes, it's the washing by the water by the word. Right. So basically you, you wash this sacrifice through the word and you wash these inward parts, right? And here the psalm says yeah, you desire truth in the inward part. Because Jesus says yeah, sanctify them by their word Thy word is true. Right? Jesus sagt, uh, heilige sie durch um, die Wahrheit. Dein Wort ist wahr. So, one, one second. So, uh, the water needs to come into these inward parts and needs to clean 
your inward parts. Also okay. Wasser muss in diesen inwendigen Teile des Körpers hineinkommen, um sie zu reinigen. Yeah. So it's the, the, the word of God must come in you to cleanse you from it. Das Wort Gottes muss in dich hineinkommen, um dich zu reinigen. Okay. Remember that this sacrifice in the beginning is Christ, but then it reverts to be you. You know, in this. Yes. Also am Anfang diese Opfergabe ist Christus, aber dann ist spielt auf dich because you put your hands on him and you transfer your sins upon him he gets slain that's Christ but when the priests take it now it's now you they, they're going to put you through this fiery trap right and if you look at this port this next one underneath the Leviticus one also wenn du deine Händen auf diese Tier legst da legst du deine Sünden auf den Tier das stellt Christus da aber wenn die Priester diesen Tier denn nehmen das stellt denn du da. Und wenn wir diesen nächsten Zitat, wer ein Studium Bibel hat, in dritte Buch Mose, äh, Kapitel 1, ganz unten, dieses zweite Zitat, das kommt in den Livestream gleich. It is Christ who searches the hearts and tries the reins of the children of men. All things are naked and open before the eyes of him whom we have to, to do. Neither is there any creature that is not manifest in his sight. In the days of ancient Israel, the sacrifices brought to the high priest were cut open to the backbone to see if they were sound at heart. So the sacrifices we bring today are laid open before the piercing eye of our great high priest. He opens and inspects every sacrifice brought by the human race, that he may prove whether it is worthy of being presented to the Father. So it's you that's being presented. Yes. Mm -hmm. Du bist es, was dem Vater vorgestellt wird. Yes. And it's basically, and she quotes also here Malachi 1.13, right? Malachi 1, 13, zitiert sie. So, keep your finger in Leviticus, let's go to Malachi 1, 13. Halte den Platz hier in Leute Buch Mose und gehen wir zu Malachi 1, 13. And let's read also verse 40, let's read verse 13 and 40. Die Verse 13 und 14 lesen. Um, who's turn is it to read? So is it done now? Malachi 1, 13 and 4. Yeah. He said also, Behold, what a weariness is it, and you have snuffed at it, said the Lord of hosts, and he brought that which was torn, and the lame and the sick as he brought an offering. Should I accept this of your hand, said the Lord, but curse be the deceiver, which hath in his flock a nail and flower, and sacrifice unto the Lord a corrupt thing. For I am a great king, said the Lord of hosts, and my name is Bethel among the heathen. Yes. Okay, so Lord rebukes us here for bringing him all these lame and corrupt offerings. Also der Herr tadelt uns, dass wir diese lahme und verunreinigte Opfergaben bringen. It's all our half-hearted services. All unsere halbherzigen Diensten. And when we go to Malachi 3, und in Malachi 3, yeah, let's read verse 3 and 4, in Verse 3 und 4, and das ist Mark. And he shall sit as a refiner and purifier of silver, and he shall purify the sons of Levi and purge them as gold and silver, that they may offer unto the Lord an offering in righteousness. Then shall the offering of Judah and Jerusalem be pleasant unto the Lord as in the days of old and as in former years. Yes. Okay, so the Lord wants to, to purge and purify us that we can then bring these acceptable offerings to him. 
Und Herr möchte uns reinigen und läutern, damit wir diese wohlgefällige Opfer ihm bringen können. And when we go now to uh, Romans chapter 12, wenn wir jetzt zu Römer 12, 12 gehen, Let's read verse one. In verse eins. I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Okay. So what are we to present before the Lord? So what sollen wir vor dem Herrn bringen? Yes. We have to present, right, our bodies as a living sacrifice. Wir sollen unsere Körper als eine lebendige Opfer darbringen. So, therefore, how much does the Lord require of us? So, wie viel verlangt der Herr von uns denn? Much more than we give him. Okay. Also viel mehr als wir ihm geben. According to the pattern, how much he is, is wants of us? Gemäß der Muster hier, wie viele von uns möchte er haben? Yes, the whole offering was to be consumed and burned also, up. Das right? gesamte Opfer sollte verzehrt und äh, verbrannt werden. So the burnt offering typifies our whole consecration to God. Also okay. diese Brandopfer schattet oder typifiziert unsere ganze Opfergabe Gottes. Yeah. So it, it, it illustrates that we are totally to be consecrated to God. Okay. Es zeigt, dass wir total Gott geweiht sein. Okay. And voluntarily. Und Amen. auch freiwillig. Okay. That's the three Hebrews. They, they voluntarily went into that fire. Also die drei okay. Hebräer, die gingen um, freiwillig in den Brandofen hinein. Yeah. Now, now let's go to um, Exodus 29. So, lasst uns jetzt zum zweiten Buch Mose 29 gehen. Let's read the verses 38 to 42. Zweite Buch Mose 29, und die Verse 38 bis 42. Es ist, ähm, So it says 29, 38 to 42, it says, Now this is that which thou shalt offer upon the altar, two lambs of the first year, day by day, continually. So it's the daily sacrifice, right? The one lamb thou shalt offer in the morning, and the other lamb thou shalt offer at even. So it's a morning and evening offering. So a morning and evening offering. And with the one lamb, a tenth field of flour mingled with the fourth part of a hin of beaten oil, and the fourth part of a hin of wine for a drink offering. And the other lamb thou shalt offer at even, and thou shalt do thereto according to the meat offering of the morning, and according to the drink offering thereof. For a sweet savour, an offering made by fire unto the Lord. This shall be a continual... What kind of offering? Burnt offering throughout your generations at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation before the Lord, where I will meet you to speak there unto thee. So, every morning and every evening, there was a burnt offering to be made. So, jeden Morgen und jeden Abend sollte eine Brandopfer gemacht werden. So. You know, this was for the whole congregation. Das war für die gesamte so what, what we looked at here was when a, a sinner would come at his own will, he would come. Okay. Was wir hier angeschaut haben, ist, wenn der Sünder freiwillig kommt. But there was also a daily sacrifice that, that was required for the whole congregation. Aber es gab auch eine tägliche Opfergabe, die verlangt wurde von der gesamten Versammlung. Uh, and this was morning and evening. Das war morgen und Abend. So what does it illustrate when we saw that What does this illustrate again? Was stellt das hier da? Was? Yes, our consecration, right? Also unsere Hingabe. Our willful consecration to God. Unsere freilige Hingabe zu Gott. And therefore, when morning and evening, these burnt offerings were offered before God. So, wenn morgen und Abend diese Brandopfer vor Gott ge äh, geweiht wurden. For the whole congregation. Die gesamte Versammlung. What does it mean? Was heißt es? Morning and evening, we, as a congregation, are to 
dedicate ourselves to the Lord. Right? Morgen und Abend als Versammlung, wir sollten uns dem Herrn weihen. Okay. Yes. Also der Leuchter soll beständig brennen, solange dass das Öl hineingegossen worden ist. So wir erhalten das Öl in den Morgen und Abend an. Yes, okay. And that's what Sister White says. The morning and evening sacrifice is replaced by morning and evening worship. Ellen White sagt, dass der Morgen und Abend äh, Opfergaben würde ersetzt durch das Morgen und Abend Andacht. Okay, so the Lord teaches us that morning and evening we are to consecrate ourselves not just a little bit, but totally to his service. Okay. Der Herr lehrt uns, dass wir uns ähm, morgen und Abend nicht nur Teil Hingabe geben, sondern gänzliche Hingabe. So, for instance, now when we are here in this evening worship, we are to fully consecrate ourselves to the Lord. Okay. Also zum Beispiel hier an diesem Abend an Dacht, wir sollten uns gänzlich der Herr weihen. Because we are not together as a congregation. Wir sind right? jetzt hier als eine Versammlung zusammen. Okay, in what Brother Mario has mentioned, let's go to Leviticus 20. Um, Well, actually, let's go to Exodus 30. Uh, this, this. Also, let's go to 2 Mose 30. And then verse 7 and 8. Die Verse 7 and 8. Because that's actually a nice addition to it. Yeah, yeah. That's a Okay, let's read verse 7 and 8. Verse 7 and 8. Uh, Brahma, do you want to read this first, please? And now in Shofan, we are on sweet and sense every morning. When he dresseth the lamps, he shall burn incense upon it. And when Aaron lighteth the lamps, at even, he shall burn incense upon it. A perpetual incense before the Lord throughout your generation. Okay, so Aaron, he he lighted the lamps when? So Aaron, der hat diese Lampen ähm, angezündet, wann? Every morning. Every morning and? Jeden Morgen und? Every evening. Und okay. Abend. And what else did he do? Und was tat er noch? Yes, he burned incense on the altar of incense. Okay. Auf den Weihrauch auf den so, what does what does um, the burning of incense represent? So, was stellt dieses Brennen der Weihrauch da? Prayer. Yes, prayers, right? So, it teaches us every morning and every evening we are to fully consecrate ourselves to the Lord. Es lehrt uns jeden Morgen und jeden Abend, wir sollen uns dem Herrn ganzlich weihen. Yeah, we are to pray morning and evening to consecrate ourselves to God. Okay. Wir sollen beten morgens und abends uns dem Herrn zu weihen. So that the two anointed ones can pour the oil on us. Yes, exactly. So dass okay. die zwei Gesalten das Öl in uns hineingießen. Yeah, that the two anointed ones can come and pour the oil into the okay. candlestick. So dass die zwei Gesalten kommen können und das Öl in der Leuchter Uh, that we can then shine and continually, right? So that we are constantly leuchten können. Because let's go now to Luke chapter one. Then let's go now to Luke chapter one. Okay. Let's read um, verse 8 down to 10. And we read the verse 8 to 10. It says, And it came to pass that while he ex executed the priest's office before God in, order of, in the order of his course, according to the custom of the priest's office, his lot was to burn incense when he went into the temple of the Lord. And the whole multitude of the people were praying without at the time of incense. Okay, so it shows you how many were praying. Also, wie viele haben gebetet? 
The whole multitude. Okay. So when were they praying? So when have they prayed? Morning and evening. Morning and evening. Okay. So what does the Lord require of us? So what verlangt der Herr von uns? Consecration morning and evening. Yes. Hingabe morning and evening. But also as a congregation, right? Aber auch als eine Versammlung. So do we actually already perform this? Also tun wir das? Okay. The question is, do we do it like this? Also, tun wir es so? You mean, you mean, do we, as a heart, do we in it? That's what you're asking. Oh, no. I mean, the, the question is, for instance, in the evening, uh, what do we do in the evening? Zum Beispiel, was tun wir abends? Yeah, we pray together, right? Ja, meine Gebetsrunde. But do we have it also in the morning? Aber haben wir das auch morgens? Not really, right? Nicht wirklich. So, but it says here that morning and evening were to be the same thing. Right? Hier, dass morgen und Abend soll dasselbe sein. So when the incense arose, uh, the congregation was praying. Also wenn der Weihrauch hinaufstieg, die Versammlung haben gebetet. In order to fully consecrate them to the Lord. So dass sie sich völlig dem Herrn weihen. Could be also, uh, I get what you're saying, but you also have your own personal. She says personal prayer is. Yes, of course. That she's yes. consecrating your prayer with her up in the morning. Yes, I mean, I, I don't want to take away the personal time because Sister White says the public time cannot replace the personal time. Also, ich möchte nicht das persönliche Gebet hiermit ersetzen, denn Ellen White sagt, dass das öffentliche Gebet kann niemals das persönliche Gebet ersetzen. Mm -hmm. But we can see that it was here also a group. Und wir können sehen hier, dass es war eine Gruppe, die sich hier geweiht hat. Okay. So, because it was the whole multitude of the people that were standing or kneeling, where I said, outside and prayed. Und es war die ganze Versammlung, die draußen hingekniet, gebetet haben. Right. So, and therefore we can see the Lord instructs us what, how he wants us to worship him. So wir können sehen, dass der Herr uns unterweist, wie wir ihm anbeten sollen. And how we can consecrate ourselves individually, uh, but also collectively to his service. Wie wir uh, uns ihm weihen können, also als Einzelperson, aber auch als ein Kollektiv in seinem Dienst. Okay, so, let me just check. Okay, now let's look um, just another point. Let's go to Numbers 28. So, lasst uns zu vierte Buch Mose 28 gehen. Let's read verse 9 and 10. And on the Sabbath made two lambs of the first year without spot and two tenth deals of flour for a meat offering, mingled with oil in the drink offering thereof. This is the burnt offering of every Sabbath, beside the continual burnt offering and his drink offering. Okay. So what was special about the Sabbath? So was war besonders über den Sabbat? Two lambs. Yes. Okay. Zwei Lamb. So additionally to the to the um, continual burnt offering. So zusätzlich zu das beständige Brandopfer. There were two lambs offered in the morning and two lambs in the evening. Okay. Zwei Lämmer die morgens and the offer born sent on two arms. So, what would this represent? What would then this represent? So, 
I mean, it's basically uh, like this additional additional consecration on the Sabbath, right? It's a special on the Sabbath. Yeah, so it's, it's, it's almost like a doubling, right? It's like a double portion. Okay. So that's basically what the Lord wants to show us, that the Sabbath is, is like the special time of consecration to God. Das ist das, was der Herr uns zeigen möchte, dass der Sabbat eine besondere Zeit der Weihung zu Gott ist. Uh, because there are no daily things going on on the Sabbath, right? Weil es keine tägliche Dinge, die stattfinden am Sabbat. Okay. And now let's go to... Uh, can everybody follow so far? Yes, you know what for the Sabbath? Like daily, like everyday activities. Like, Alltägliches. Um, like the business. Und sowas. Okay. So let's go now to Mark 12. Let's go now to Mark 12. Verse 33. Mark 12, verse 33. Well, let's read verse 32 and 33. Uh, Nick, you want to read this first, please? Yes. Um, 32. And 33. And the scribe said unto him, Well, Master, thou hast said the truth, for there is one God, and there is none other but he. And to love him with all the heart, Okay, so what is it actually that the Lord always wants? So what is this what the Herr eigentlich möchte? Okay, all our hearts, right? Unsere gesamten Herz. Um, to really love God. So that's the true burnt offering that he requires of us. Das ist der wahre Brandopfer, die er von uns verlangt. Um, because also in Hosea it says not, um, that the Lord regards the knowledge of God more than burnt offering. Okay. In Hosea, der Herr betrachtet ein Kenntnis der Herrn mehr als alle Brandopfer. Okay. So basically God wants us to give him his heart and to know him. Also okay. der Herr möchte, dass wir uns unserem Herzen ihm geben und ihn kennen. Psalm 51 sagt es, er hat kein Wohlgefallen an Brandopfer. Yes. Then it says, the sacrifice is a God and a broken spirit. A broken and contrite, oh God, will they not despise? Die wahre Opfergaben sind eine gebrochene Herz. Der Herr wird das nicht verachten. And let's go now also to 1 Samuel. So let's go to 1 Samuel again. And let's uh, read uh, verse, uh, chapter 15. Kapitel 15. And this was when Saul was passed by. Das war der Zeit, wo um, der Herr an Saulus überging. Über Because Saul didn't understand uh, this concept that it's about the heart and not about the offering. Weil Saul hat nicht verstanden, dass es über das Herz war und nicht über das Opfer ging. Okay, let's read verse 1 Samuel 15, verse 22 and 23. 1 Samuel, Kapitel 15, Verse 22, 23. And the Führer, it's 1 Samuel 15, verse 22 to 23.
Yes. Okay, so what is the Bible saying here? Was sagt die Bibel hier? And what, what is uh, the Lord requiring of us? Was verlangt der Herr von uns? Obedience. Obedience, okay. Um, Gehorsam. And now let's just go to Hosea, let us also read this. So there are six, six. Das ist so Hosea 6, 6. Ich habe es nicht erwähnt, aber wir wollen es einmal lesen. Es ist das so sieht es aus. Hosea 6, Vers 6. Hosea 6, Vers 6. What is the Lord requiring? Was verlangt der Herr? According to this verse. To this verse. Mm -hmm. yes, mercy. It's mercy and knowledge of God. Gnade und Einkenntnis des Herrn. Okay, so <coughs> therefore this is what this should teach. Okay. Das ist das, was das hier lehren möchte. So the, sollte. the burnt offering should teach us this full consecration. To God. Opfer sollte uns diese gänzliche Hingabe und Weihung Gott zu Gott. And we receive this full consecration when we seek obedience and a knowledge of God, mercy, and really love God and love our neighbor as ourselves. Okay. Wir erhalten diese ganze Hingabe, wenn wir suchen um, ein Kenntnis des Herrn und Gnade und Gehorsam, Gehorsam und die Liebe zu unserem Nächsten und to God. Unsere Liebe, gänzliche Liebe zu Gott. Okay. So this is what the Lord wants to show us. Das ist okay. das, was der Herr uns zeigen möchte. This is how we consecrate ourselves fully to the Lord. So weihen wir uns dem Herrn gänzlich. And this is, uh, it's all about our heart. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. So I hope we, we could learn something new this evening. So ich hoffe, dass wir was Neues heute gelernt haben. And that we can now more fully see what God is expecting of us. Dass wir mehr sehen kann von das, was der Herr von uns verlangt. And that we now, from every morning and every evening, bring this burnt offering to God. Dass wir jeden Morgen und Abend diese Brandopfer Gott bringen. Mm. And that we fully consecrate ourselves to the Lord and that the light of the candlestick can grow brightly and that our prayers can ascend with the incense. Dass wir uns ganz dem Herrn hingeben, dass unsere Lampe hell leuchten kann und unsere Gebete zum Herrn mit dem Weihrauch steigen können. Amen. Amen. Okay, then let's close for this evening. Let's close for today.